Hey there, and welcome back to the channel. What we're doing today is improving my miter saw station. And I know what you're thinking, how can this possibly get any better, right? So one of the top comments when I posted this video about my miter saw station up there is, what about a stop block system? So for those of you that don't know what a stop block system is, it's essentially using a block at regular intervals that stops or clamps down, and then you can use that block as a measurement tool to repeat the same cuts to the exact same length, as opposed to just marking and then penciling the, the cut every single time, which tends to be a little bit out because that's just you know your, your human eye. Anywho, I thought about this in a lot of depth and all the gamut of solutions that are available, having a fence that is basically the same as this, but keeps on going, that's one potential solution. Uh, the issue there is, is that you lose a tabletop. So for those of you that are like me, you tend to just dump. This is a bit of a dumping ground while you're halfway through a project. And if you have a miter saw fence or fence system that goes for a couple meters, that tends to be gets in the way quite a lot. You can make that removable, but then you have to drill holes, which is not, not the worst thing in the world, but then you have to store that somewhere when it's out of the way. And I thought about maybe doing that and maybe storing it up on this wall. That would work as well. Then I was thinking, and I had a look at Hooked on Wood. So Dennis from Hooked on Wood posted a video a little while ago. He used a digital system, and I think I might do something similar. The only difference is I want to design it and 3D print it so you can download the files and make it yourself at home. So what we're going to be doing is using this rail system. So this is a two rail system, a little bit different to the ones you've seen before, but essentially this is going to be the guide in which the stop block system runs. And this is going to be the magnetic strip to which the digital system uses. All this will make sense throughout the video. So make sure you stay by. Anyway, so first things first, what I need to do is something I've been dreading for quite some time, and that's to route a channel into this beautiful Midasaur station. Now, as that age old saying goes that I made up almost a year ago, a new job is a great excuse to buy a new tool. So I bought a new router, the Festool OF 1400 EQB. I'm pretty happy with this thing. I've been eyeing this off for probably a good two years. I've been using my Palm router for quite some time, which is great, the little cordless DeWalt, but it's probably not up to the task of going through this timber and how much I need to route out is probably gonna be a little bit much. That and I have the track source system already from Festool and you can just buy an adapter that hooks up to the track, makes things much easier, but I'm pretty excited about using this bad boy. So. Let's get going. Radio. So this is definitely one of those situations where you want to measure 6,000 times and cut once. If you're cutting twice, that means your first cut was off and you've probably bought some new timber. Anywho, right. So what we're going to be doing is cutting a groove along with the parallel or near to parallel with the fence and the edge of the table. And as an aside, a groove when it goes with the grain and a dado when it goes across the grain. So there you go. Right, anyway, so you have one of two choices. So we have the miter saw fence, and we can make the groove exactly parallel with the miter saw fence, or we can make it parallel with the table edge. Now what I found is when I was measuring it with the table saw fence, is that here, to the end here, was out by about five millimeters, maybe six, so it's just off a little bit. Now, the nature of this stop block, it doesn't really matter if it's out by a few millimeters. I'm not creating another fence on which this thing's reliant 
to be square against anyway. So it's not the end of the world. So what I've decided to do is make the groove parallel with the edge of the table and it and if it's significantly out which it probably will be a little bit I can adjust the miter saw a little bit uh, as well and then re-screw it down so it's not the end of the world I can also re 3d print some of those blocks which I'll show you in a second uh, which will go down here as well and I'll make sure that that's included in the plans and all that kind of stuff later on cool so what I've done is I've measured from the edge all the way down using a combination square. So it's just like an adjustable square. So I've measured all the way down. It's perfectly parallel. I'm gonna redo that about 6,000 times. And I'm gonna clamp it down where I can. And what I've got here is a little attachment for the Festool router. It's a track, track saw guide or something like that. And it has a little micro adjust. So when I'm riding this in the groove, I can micro adjust it that side and this side. So what I wanted to do is definitely sneak up on the cut. So I'm probably gonna cut this about 1600 times, but I definitely wanna sneak up in the cut so that uh, aluminum profile fits perfectly inside that groove and there's no slop. That's the plan. And as, as long as this thing's clamped down and not moving anywhere, that's going to be a good day. Uh, and I think I'm ready to go. But let me remeasure everything again and then clamp things down, remeasure it again, reclamp it probably, and do my first cut. I'm not nervous at all, at all. Maybe a little bit. Let's go. Alrighty, I am pretty happy with this first tour router, so good purchase indeed. Right, uh, the groove is done. There's a slight, tiniest bit of slop with the aluminium profile inside the groove. I'm still getting used to that micro adjustments as do I turn left to go forward, or right to turn back, or that kind of stuff, but I will get used to it after a little while. But it's not the end of the world, I can just take up some of the sawdust I have laying about, mix it with a bit of glue into a paste, and then just fill in that gap. It's tiny, tiny, and I'll see how the profiles look once they're inset anyway, and if you can't really notice, then I won't do it. Uh, what I do have to do is unpack all this, clean everything up. I do need to fix up the end over there because a router bit is round and the profiles are square. It's gonna have that little corner just there, which I just need to chisel away. And it's a good opportunity for me to use a tool that I bought probably about a year ago, over a year ago, a uh, hand tool for a router and I haven't used it yet from Melbourne Tool Company so a good opportunity for me to finally use that just a little bit of a trim so I'll trim that up on the end use the chisels for that and my new router or my new old router take everything apart put in the profiles and then we can test fit my prototype zero clearance digital miter saw stop block trademark anywho let's get on with it Cool, so that is done, nice and square. The rail's butted up all the way to the end. On the other side though, there's a bit hanging over. So I've just marked it and then we'll just cut it on the miter saw. Coolio, so everything is ready and cut the size. All I need to do is just attach it down to the tabletop. And it has a set of countersunk holes along the profile. And what I'm gonna do is use one of these VIX bits or self-centering and drill bits. And the idea is it's got a little chamfer on the tip and that chamfer automatically finds the center of the hole and then a little spring-loaded 
uh, three millimeter drill bit. In this, in this case, you can get in different sizes, uh, finds that the center and drills directly in the center of the hole. So when you screw in countersunk screws, if they're off to one side or the other, what tends to happen because they're off, it'll, as it comes down and it wedges into that countersink, it naturally pulls the uh, profiles or anything you're screwing in into a different direction. And you want one of these things, so you smack bang right in the center. You can eyeball it, but might as well use this. I bought these off Amazon for like 20 bucks for, there was about 10 of them or something like that, varying sizes. Anyway, I'll link that in the description below. Let's just do this little bit, attach it, and then we can test fit our little prototype. Cool, yeah, that is all drilled in. And next step is to do a test fit of my little prototype. Right, yeah, so without further ado, I introduce you to the digital zero clearance Midasaur stop lock system. Just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Anywho, so I got the idea from Dennis at Hooked on Wood, and he's made his entirely out of MDF, a little bit of aluminum extruded, but I decided to do it in a 3D printable format. So I'm gonna freely share the STL file so you can drag and drop into your 3D printer. I'm also going to share the Fusion 360 files so you can make adjustments specific to your needs or change a thing entirely. If you do come up with a better design, please hit me up. I'll gladly relink it or I'll just 3D print yours instead of mine because you're probably better at, three, at uh, Fusion 360 than I am. Anyway, so it's centered around this digital readout which you can, you can buy online. I'll link that down below. There's a little cavity inside on which the cable goes out to a digital reader. That digital reader reads a magnetic strip which you embed inside any channel. I've decided on this type of aluminium profile but you can use whichever one you want. Now obviously if you use your own, it, the 3D print file will have to change a little bit accordingly. But because I'm sharing those files, you can do that quite easily. So this, this magnetic strip, which I haven't affixed down inside the channel yet, what you do is put the reader right next to it or right on top of it. You can zero it out. And then what you do is as you move the stop lock left and right, it increases and decreases uh, the measurements, which are programmable units in millimeters and inches here. You can increase and decrease the measurement so you have a digital readout of how far from the Midasaur it blade itself this stop lock is, which is fantastic. So there's a couple of things I need to do. I need to print out the little guide and what we need to do there is just measure the inside of this channel and then we're going to super glue and screw that guide on the underside just purely because uh, every single Midasaur station and the rails is going to be slightly different. I did want to incorporate that into the 3D print because then I would, I would have to have millimeter precision where this guide rail is in conjunction with the Midasaur fence. And I think I'm out maybe about a millimeter in front of the fence. So it's a good thing that I can move that little um, guide just by super gluing it and screwing it on the underside here, which is fantastic. So let's 3D print that and then we'll affix this magnetic strip down and then we can call this project done and do some testing. Right, yeah, so back from the 3D printer, I 3D printed this little guide block. Uh, it took about 20 minutes on the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon, which is a great printer, by the way. Uh, I aim to do a bit of a review of 3D printers and for woodworking, because I've been 3D printing for probably about five or six years now. So I was an early adopter of 3D printers, went through so much pain and effort uh, with some of the early ones, but Bamboo definitely hit the nail on the head when it comes to ease of use. Anywho, uh, this one is just a little guide block. I chamfered the inside so you can fit countersunk screws inside nice and easily. We need to make sure it fits in the guide rail. It does. Does it move? It does. It doesn't really wiggle around too much. So there's not a lot of slop, which is a positive as well. Now all we need to do is just put some super glue on it, put this thing down, wait for it to dry, take it off, screw it in from the underside, and we have the system ready to go to test.
So to calibrate the system, what you need to do is push the stop block up against the Mitosaur itself. Then you need to push the function key, push it again, then push it again to hit zero, and then you're calibrated. Now, what we're gonna do is push the Mitosaur stop block all the way to the left, and then come back to see if it gets back to zero. Amazing. And there you have it, another successful Richmond Woodworks workshop build series project. Rolls off the tongue now, doesn't it? Anywho, I've had this in the back of my mind for so long, like four, five, six months, and I wanted to incorporate a stop block system into the Mitosaur station itself, but I wanted not to have a Mitosaur fence that would be blocking the storage of stuff on here halfway through projects. So with that, I'm so, so happy, and I had a great time in my workshop, and I really hope that each and every single one of you have a great time in your workshop this weekend, and take care of yourselves, everyone, and I'll see you in the next project. Bye.